Watch designers can have a huge impact on one brand or on one model in particular. Today, we speak to a man who in the early 2000s worked at Audemars Piguet on the Millinery, the Diver, and the famous 15202. That's right, today we're meeting with Octavio Garcia. Octavio, thank you so much for having us here. It's a real treat to be in your design studio here in Crécier. Thank you for having me, Arthur. It's a pleasure to have you with me here to share this, uh, this moment with you. You have three pieces in, in front of you, three pieces from Audemars Piguet's collection and three that are important to you personally. You were designer there from 2003 to 2015. Tell me what it was like to be a designer at that time for AP? Incredible experience, obviously. The brand was in a special place, I think, looking for a solid direction in terms of design, wanting to uh, develop the offshore collection particularly. Just before I got there, the concept watch was launched, so you could tell there was a real commitment to research and, and, and breaking new ground. Mm -hmm. So absolutely the, the perfect timing, I would say, for creativity. So in 2003, you arrive and you're given an opportunity to have a company watch and you choose the now uh, so-called Kasparov. Yes, when I joined Audemars in 2003, uh, after my two month trial period, I was uh, offered the opportunity to choose amongst uh, a number of different watches. So this is the 25860 ST and it absolutely caught my attention immediately on the tray. It's blue dial, stainless steel construction, obviously the famous octagon that I was, to be completely honest with you, much less familiar with at the time. And However, it's 39 millimeters. 30, 39 millimeters. Th this watch represents the, the beginning of my creative journey with Audemars Piguet. When I left AP in 2015, I decided to purchase it for myself as a, as a memory as a, uh, of, of the, the beginning of that journey. So is that watch on your wrist while you're designing the next piece, which is a piece that you designed in 2007 for Alinghi, correct? Actually, it, it was. The, the 2007 Alinghi was a, also an incredible challenge from a design standpoint. Fantastic collaboration with Alinghi and uh, really proved that Odma was searching in research and development new materials, a new direction for the, uh, for the offshore. And this Royal Oak offshore format was just a beautiful canvas from a design standpoint to experiment. Take me through the decisions to go towards a carbon case here for the, for the, Alinghi, for the first Alinghi. With the help of the internal research and development team, they brought forward this idea of, of really going full on carbon fiber and going beyond that and really uh, offering something that was 100 meter water resistant, a, a true tool watch that, uh, that the, the crew could use on board. Mm -hmm. This is a prototype. What makes it a, a unique is the, the case back, mm -hmm. which is in full forged carbon. So you still have all the details of the medallion in the center, which is a scene from the Alinghi race boat with the crew on the waters and the engraving, the special engraving of the Alinghi Team Limited Edition. And tell me about this little logo on the dial because it's evolved a little bit. You're familiar with the logo on the dial. Yes, it actually, actually the, that was uh, an interesting situation. At the time I said that I wanted the logo to be integrated into the operation of the, of the countdown, the 10 minute countdown that you see on the aperture. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I took the liberty of creating a white line uh, around the Alinghi logo to link it directly to the aperture. And um, a few weeks later, I received a call from the art director of Alinghi uh, telling me that that was not authorized. It was not authorized to modify the Alinghi logo. Unfortunately, some pieces were already in production. Mm -hmm. We stopped it, we, we corrected it, but there was already a few pieces that were on the wrist of some, some of our clients. After the Alinghi launches, 
you're approached <laughs> with a gift. <laughs> I was I was I was actually uh, uh, privileged enough to to have this watch given to me by Audemars as a as a token of their appreciation for my my contribution to uh, to the design of the piece. Yeah. So next to the offshore is the 15202 from the Royal Oak family. And this is a piece that you start working on in 2010. And you have a diff you're setting yourself a very different challenge with this watch, correct? Absolutely. In view of the 40th anniversary of 2012, I was asked to revitalize the Royal Oak collection, starting with the 15202, a very important piece that for many years was overshadowed by the Royal Oak offshore. We absolutely thought it was necessary for the 40th anniversary of the Royal Oak to start with the principal origi original piece. I considered myself more a contributing steward, more so than a designer. Is it true that you were encouraged to maybe go in a different direction instead of trying to be as faithful to the original design, you received some, um, <laughs> some feedback that you should go a different way? And I did get some uh, feedback uh, encouraging me to push the product in a more futuristic uh, direction, more ergonomic direction, modern direction. But ultimately we, we felt that, uh, that it was a piece so important and so uh, already so perfect that the best thing to do would be to, to just enhance it, make it more technically sound. But there are some small changes that you made. Can you take me through those? For the most part, it, it really was uh, more an engineering approach, simply to enhance technically some of the uh, some of the features of the watch, particularly the triple folding clasp with the uh, two pusher security. The oscillating mass is also a fantastic uh, element for designers because we can really express ourselves. And here we took the original silhouette but made it a bit more contemporary in style by giving it a bit more edge. We bought back the mirror polish flange, which I, I feel is a very important part that is not necessarily uh, easy to see, but it clearly frames the, the dial in a, in a particular way. Uh, you did such an amazing job and I know that collectors were so happy when they saw this come back. We, we got some tremendous feedback and I'm, I'm, very, I'm very privileged and proud to, to have been a part of this, uh, this project. So now these three pieces you've decided to give new collectors an opportunity to acquire them. Can you tell us about your decision to separate from these pieces today? Arthur, it was a, it was a difficult decision. I mean, each one of these pieces represents a milestone in, in my career at Old Piguet, but also uh, in my journey as, a, as an artist. And so the decision to, to uh, auction these pieces with Philips was, was not an easy one to take. But uh, I'm also an entrepreneur and uh, I embrace change. And today I have other projects and uh, I want to turn the page and, and uh, focus on offering new creative avenues for watch collectors with my new projects. So that's, that's where that decision comes from. Octavia, thank you so much for sharing these beautiful stories. Now, the three pieces are offered in the next Geneva cell on May 13th and 14th. The collectors will be given an opportunity to purchase watches with incredible provenance and an important part in the career of one of the principal designers at Audemars Piguet during the 21st century. Thank you so much, Octavio. Thank you.